joining us in studio. Today we are joined by the executive chef, David Viviano of the Weston Phoenix downtown. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Be well, here. it looks like you just came from the market. So we're going to touch on a little bit of how you put together a menu. But real quick, I'd like to introduce Chef Viviano actually is a brand new columnist. He's been writing for us for a few months now. Um, wrote some great content about your trip to Hawaii and the cuisine and great recipe about mochi, butter mochi yep, that you had yeah. in there. Um, also, how, you know, your, your passion about food and how you kind of you know, went into becoming a chef. So some great pieces. The most recent one that he actually wrote was on the um, market, you know, the local markets here in Phoenix, the Phoenix public market, actually. Yep. And so we kind of want to talk about people are going to be planning, you know, dinners for Thanksgiving and the holidays, and they're going to be doing a lot of shopping. So one great place to look for items, as you have said, is the local markets here in Phoenix. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, what we try to do here is basically transform your studio into what you would find at a farmer's market. Um, a lot of the produce we have here and a lot of the products we have are directly from going to the uh, market on this past Saturday. Okay. Um, so the one thing that I, I like to add about when you're going to the market and you're creating a menu, um, go with a plan. Okay. Um, have your menu thought out. That way you can go and you can look for certain items. What's happened to me a lot of times when I go to the market with my wife is we get so caught up in the atmosphere that we leave with, you know, a, a jar of harissa and, <laughs> you know, a loaf of bread and some cheese and some squash blossoms, but we really don't have a plan and don't know what to do with it. We have all this beautiful product, but right. then what do you do with it when mm -hmm. you get home? So now it's, uh, we, we have our plan, we take a lap, we go through the market, we look at everything. Okay. We see what's in season, we talk to the different, um, talk to the different farmers, talk to the different meat purveyors, and then we get an idea of where the best tomatoes are and where the best price for them are and um, if the cucumbers look great. And then you kind of go through and um, you have your idea and then you go back through for the second time, you pick mm -hmm. out what you want, um, and then you enjoy yourself at the market and you're, you're ready to go and go home and start cooking. Well, you've got an abundant of produce and items here. So let's kind of talk about, you've got all of these at the Phoenix Market here in yep. downtown. Okay, so let's kind of run through some of these items here. What do we have over all here? All right, we'll start over here. Uh, we have, these are from all different farms. Um, some of this okra we have, it's a, uh, these are it's basically an heirloom okra. You're going to usually find okra that looks like this. It's just a, you know, a green piece mm -hmm. of okra. And that's like your normal one. I don't think I've ever held okra before. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fuzzy, huh? <laughs> um, what do you make okra with? You can do it. You can fry it. Oh, okay. You can slice it. You can stew it. Um, it's you see it a lot in Cajun cuisine. Oh, okay. So um, it's kind of an you know an outlet for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have the green and we have this nice purple one. So it's basically an heirloom variety. Um, I thought it was really unique, so that's why I picked this up. Okay. Um, as you can see, as you saw, it's very firm. Yeah. And with any vegetable, that's what you're looking for. Okay. You're looking for firm. You're looking for no blemishes. Oh. Um, you want to smell it. You want to make sure you kind of get a nice sweet smell. You don't want it too sweet because that means it's going to get. It's, it might be overripe, mm -hmm. so you can buy it then, but you got to cook with it right away. Okay. Um, Is that kind of the general rule for most? For the most part. Okay. Yeah. Because I don't know when I, you know, I'm just like, oh, it looks good. You know, well, there's no bruising. And a lot of times, I know what's great is you're. When you're at the farmer's market, you're buying this produce and this product directly from the farmer, and they're just, they're connected to what they're selling you. Right. So the, the other day, I grabbed a pepper. I grabbed, I think, like a yellow pepper, and I went up there to buy it, mm -hmm. and he turned it over, and he found a blemish, and he said, I'll take this, go get another one. Oh, that was So nice. they're just mm -hmm. investing in their product, right. and they want you to have the best possible product. Yeah, it's like they're helping you pick exactly. out the best product. Oh, okay, exactly. great. Yeah. So the okra I got from... Crooked Sky Farms. Mm -hmm. um, I got this from Crooked Sky Farms with a bunch of different heirloom peppers. Mm -hmm. um, there's all different kinds of chilies here. These, this is a Scotch bonnet mm -hmm. chili. That's pretty. Um, this is a habanero. Oh. Make sure you wash your hands when you're done. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, don't rub your eyes, right? Exactly. And then these are uh, just some little jalapenos. Oh, how cute. Are these ready? No, they're ready. Oh. <laughs> so little. Since they're so small, they're going to have a very, um, they're going to be very spicy because oh, it's okay. very, very pungent flavor. Mm -hmm. But I'll take these back. We'll keep working our way over. Um, lettuces, coming in the fall, you're going to see lettuces start to get nice again. The weather's okay. going to cool, and that's going to be better for the lettuce. Right now, it's too hot. The okay. lettuce is going to just weep. It's not going to be the way we want it. So not the best time right now nope, to pick but out it's your lettuce, but October, as it, gets as it cools, November's going to be good, okay. December. That's good to know. Um, some of the fruits right now that we've got are um, a bunch of different pears. This is a seckle pear. Uh -huh. This is an anju pear. If you can smell it, my wife and I picked this up, and it's it doesn't have as much much of a robust mm -hmm. smell right now because we refrigerated it, it up, but it's yeah. a little sweet. Uh -huh. But it was just really floral and sweet and just wonderful when we bought it. We actually had a dinner party on Sunday, 
And I just sliced these up. I made a sabagnon sauce, and I put it over the top and served it with some sugar cookies. It was wonderful. Oh, so when you're getting product. fresh product like this, just keep it simple. Okay. Um, keep the product as fresh and as true to its, to its original form. Okay. Um, so these are in season now. What you're going to start seeing coming in the um, fall and the winter, you're going to start seeing your citrus. Okay. So your oranges, your clementines, your blood oranges, things of that nature, they're going to come into season. Um, other things coming in now are figs, dates, things like that. Okay, so good time to work with fruits and citrus, okay. Definitely. All right, um, new bread company, we can talk about Ooh. it uh, a little bit now. It's a it's, beautiful display, by the way. <laughs> this is all from Mediterra Bread. Uh, bread. Okay. They're new to the market. I want to say possibly in the spring they came to the Phoenix market. They're right in the middle of Phoenix and Tucson. They're in Coolidge. Um, but right now we've got, he did a beautiful hala, a knotted challah for us. We have an olive loaf. Uh, there's some ciabatta here. Um, a beautiful whole grain bread, uh -huh. and then his brioche, you can smell it, it smells like butter. Oh yes, it does. He uses Pluger butter, um, really, really tasty. Mm -hmm. So, uh, he's got some nice little baguettes here, and uh, he was at the market on Saturday, and from what I hear, he's been there pretty regularly. So, so this is all his is, that you can exactly, get? Exactly. Oh, okay. Exactly. Great. And so, then we've also got some more over here. We'll keep moving. I think I have a combination of things from the color. Well, over here. The pears were from One Windmill Farm, uh -huh. and most of the stuff in this basket is from Maya Farms. Maya Farms, okay. Um, squash blossoms. Oh! I just thought those were flowers. So, no, there you go. Squash blossoms. They can oh, look wow. like flowers. Yeah. You can, you know what, if you if you oh, want to put them in, like, if one thing that's really cool that my wife actually does a lot with, uh -huh. she's very creative, is she likes to put um, food into her flower displays. So we had, uh, we bought all this, Never thought about we that. bought this basil uh -huh. on Saturday and I think we bought some wildflowers as well, but she stuck the little buds of basil in it and it just oh. makes it very fresh and right. more fragrant. And even for our wedding, we did something similar where we had like, uh, budding artichokes and, um, rosemary sticking out of it and thyme sticking out of it. So you can almost use it for decor as exactly. well just, as just cooking with it. With it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we got that from Maya. Mm -hmm. Some beautiful radishes are going to come into season. Okay. Um, the squash blossoms are obviously there at the beginning of the squash. So this tells you it's the beginning of squash season. So zucchinis are going to come become more prevalent. Um, some of the yellow squash, and then you're gonna also see winter squash, like butternut squash, acorn squash, getty squash, things of that nature. Lots of squash. Oh yeah, that's that's <laughs> the winter. Um, beautiful little baby eggplants. There's some cucumber down here. Um, we got some heirloom tomatoes. Mm -hmm. um, just a bunch of. This is great for produce. presentation, even. Exactly. Like decor. Yeah, you could just put this on your table. Exactly. <laughs> Ready for a feast. Definitely. My my wife decorates every table, so <laughs> she's she's done things like that as well. Now this. This looks very nice. You can almost yep. make this as a gift for the holidays. Definitely. And this is, again, all local. All local. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when you go to the farmer's market, you're going to not only have um, farmers and meat purveyors um, and bakers there, but you're going to have people that specialize in um, specific artisan-style food. Okay. Um, what we have here are some Queen Creek olives um, right here that are stuffed with feta. Mm -hmm. This is a Queen Creek tapenade. Uh, this is Queen Creek olive oil, so it's from right here in Queen Creek. Right. Um, absolutely delightful honey. It's a oh, local honey. Okay. And I don't know how familiar you are with um, Arizona honeys, but I think... Not very. I'm a Midwest guy, mm -hmm. and uh, coming out here, one of the favorite products that i found is, is the honey we have in Arizona. It's just really floral. I don't know if it's something with the desert wildflowers or what it is, but it's just a wonderful, wonderful honey. It's very light, and it's just I really enjoy the honey in this area. Very distinct. Definitely. Put okay. it on a little bread. Another thing I've done for a dessert before is mm -hmm. just take some stone fruits or whatever kind of fruits in season, grill it, take some Arizona honey, drizzle it over the top, you're done. That's easy. So. <laughs> um, Hayden Flour Mills is a local flour miller. Uh, we also have some crackers that are made locally here from mm -hmm. Urban Oven. Uh, another guy that you'll see there is, I think it's Pickled Perfection. Okay. He does all different kinds of um, canned items that he pickles himself. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of variety at the market. Oh, yeah. So, you know, if you're looking for anything really that you're looking for, it seems like you can just find right there. For sure. And definitely a lot of specialty items. Um, you can find some proteins. Okay. Uh, there's a few farmers there, but a lot of times, you know, I'll, I'll, I may get protein somewhere else, or I may get like my fish somewhere else. So obviously, since it's so, fish is so perishable, they don't have it at the market a lot. Right. Um, but it's a great way to definitely get the bread you want, to find the vegetables you need, mm -hmm. you need for your dish, um, pick out some beautiful fruits mm -hmm. and, you know, build your meal around that or go in with a plan and then, you know, pick up what you need for it. So start with a plan. Start with <laughs> a plan or you're going to get caught up in the atmosphere and then who knows what you'll come home with. 
Right, well, and again, great idea for the holidays as well, Definitely. so, and a great way to support local. Definitely, and um, as far as, you know, picking out the product, uh, make sure it's firm, make sure it smells fragrant, uh, you don't want any blemishes. If you're unsure, ask, ask the farmer. Great, well, thank you so much for joining us today. No problem, my pleasure.